Welcome back to Ultimate Spider-Man Saturdays, or should I say, welcome to the end. That's right, we've done this series to its completion as far as we intend to do it here at Comic Storian, and I really hope you guys have enjoyed the ride. But it's time to tell you the end. How the Ultimate Spider-Man storyline came to its inevitable conclusion. And I'm telling you right now, you will not regret it. This is the Comic Story and Complete Story series where we take your favorite trade paperbacks and single issues and we break them down into digestible bites to help you understand and then we read them dramatically back to you. All alterations to the panels, text, and images are to prevent copyright problems and all art is owned by its respective companies. Now let's get to the end of this. Once again, we've jumped ahead in the timeline. What you've missed is that Peter Parker was allowed to keep his powers as long as he underwent training with Steve Rogers. And Johnny Storm and Bobby Drake are now living with Aunt May. Now our story begins over in the S.H.I.E.L.D. containment facility as director Carol Danvers asks Norman Osborn if he understood everything that she just said. And Norman begins to open up his eyes, stating that, I thought I was dead. And Carol tells him, yeah, about that, that's the first thing on our list of things that we need to figure out about Norman Osborn. Norman looks up, gritting his teeth, and Carol points her gun at him that she would love nothing more than for him to try and break free. Norman watches, and he closes his eyes. A short while later in the holding cells, Dr. Leonard Sampson tells Norman that he's here to ask him some questions regarding his brush with death. Sampson then begins to ask some questions, and Norman stops him, telling him, If you want anything from me, you can tell the blonde that it's going to cost her. I want privileges and considerations. Carol radios down from the room, telling Norman that he can go to hell. They already have his blood and his DNA. He can just rot down there for all she cares. Norman's eyes begin to glow when he says, You have no idea what's inside of me. He begins to stand up and his body begins to change and Carol shouts for everyone to get to their stations. They have a code red alert and they need a full lockdown. Norman changes into the goblin and begins to rip apart his cell, telling everyone that they have no idea how close to God I've become. Before the soldiers can begin firing, the room begins to fill with fire, burning everyone alive and tearing down the walls. Norman then calls out for everyone to come to him and through the destroyed cells, Electro, Craven, Sandman, Vulture, and Otto Octavius all come out. Sandman says that if they're going to make a break for it, they should probably do it now. And with that, Norman jumps out of the S.H.I.E.L.D. headquarters onto the flight pad. He looks at the helicopter asking if anyone can fly this, and Electro tells him, Yeah, I was actually in the Air Force at one point. Meanwhile, over at the cemetery, Spider-Man swings down to Captain America asking, Why are we meeting here of all places? And Steve tells him that he needs to learn about life and death. And for what he's seen, Spider-Man doesn't fight like other lives depend on it. You're nothing more than a teenager, and frankly, you act as such. Carol Danvers came to the Ultimates asking what we should do about Spider-Man. Thor and Iron Man gave the thumbs up, but I feel that you should be benched, soldier. And since I was outvoted, I'm here to teach and train you. As Steve goes on, his communicator goes off, and Carol says that they have a priority situation. There's been a breakout. However, that isn't what she's calling for. Fury's Black Ops team has gone rogue in the city. Steve runs over to his motorcycle, telling Spider-Man that they're gonna have to do this another time. It's a level one emergency, and you are not to follow, soldier. As Steve speeds off, Spider-Man webs off following him, telling him that it's not like he can stop him from following. Back with Norman and the others, they all break into an apartment to lay low while Vulture turns on the TV. The news shows the Ultimates fighting on a bridge, and Norman says that this is good. His eyes widen as he watches, stating, This is God's work. What I'm showing you all here is that we're going to kill Peter Parker. And over at that bridge, Spider-Man looks on as the explosions begin to rip the bridge apart when his phone rings. He picks it up telling Mary Jane that this isn't really a good time, and Mary Jane shouts that it's Norman. He's alive and he's escaped. You have to get Gwen and Aunt May as far away as you can. Back at the apartment, everyone discusses what they should do next when Craven suggests that they just get out of town. Norman looks back and tells everyone, no, we stay here. What we need to do is here in New York. Otto says, look. I appreciate everything that you've done for me in the past, but I've got to say, I'm not about this killing Peter Parker thing anymore. All I want to do now is go back to work again. Be a scientist. We should leave Spider-Man alone and just take pride in what we've created. Norman changes into the goblin, punching Otto out the window, asking, "We!" As Otto begins to fall, he starts to gather the surrounding metal to catch himself, and when he lands, he screams for Norman! He jumps back to the window, but before he can hit Otto, Otto uses one of his arms and he cracks Norman across the face. Otto shouts, just because I don't want to fight, doesn't mean that I've forgotten how. Meanwhile, back at the Parker home, they're watching TV when Peter comes running and telling Aunt May and Gwen that they have to get out of here. Aunt May asks what's going on, and Peter shouts, It's Norman, the goblin! He's alive and he's broken out of jail, and he's brought everyone that I've ever beaten up along with him. Peter Parker pulls
pulls out his mask and he says, they know who I am and they know where I live. As the two begin to gather the things, Aunt May tells Peter that he needs to come with them. And he grabs her hand telling her, I can't. I have to do this. Now just go. Back in the streets of New York, Norman throws fireballs, knocking Otto to the ground, and he jumps towards him. The metal arms try to hold him back, and Otto shouts, you need to stop this. And Norman screams, after all I've done for you, this is what you do. He punches into one of the metal arms, and soon he pushes through to Otto himself. Punch after punch, he begins to beat down on Otto's head until finally the metal arms fall apart. A short while later, Peter swings down and sees Otto's smoldering upper body, stating that he did it. Norman Osborn actually killed Otto Octavius. Some of the civilians run up telling Spider-Man that he should have seen it. It was like the Hulk or something was going crazy. And Spider-Man shouts, which way did he go? And everyone starts to point. So Spider-Man quickly swings up towards the apartment. As he gets in, he looks around stating that of course they're not here. Why would they be here? And just then he sees the fight back over at the bridge and decides to head back. However, as soon as he swings into it, he notices the Punisher getting into position with a sniper rifle. He looks back down and he sees Steve standing over Nick Fury and the gun is pointed right at him. Frank Castle takes aim, and Spider-Man tries to web him, but he misses. As Spider-Man swings low, the gun goes off, and then he tackles Steve, and the bullet goes straight through Spider-Man's side. After passing out, Spider-Man wakes up to see the bridge destroyed and blood pouring out of himself. He thinks that he should probably go to the hospital, but if he does, people are going to find out who Spider-Man is. So he webs up the wounds, stating that it should at least last him until he can get to. But before he can finish that, he sees Norman and the others shooting by. Meanwhile, back at the Parker home, Johnny Storm and Bobby Drake return, and Bobby shouts that it's hard not telling the girl that he's trying to hook up with that he doesn't have powers. She was complaining that his hands were cold. Johnny calls out asking if anyone's home and then he finds a note on the phone stating get out of the house immediately and call as soon as you get to a safe place. Why isn't your phone on? Bobby asks, why isn't my phone on? And Johnny tells him that he kind of melts it every time that he flames up, so... As the two open the door to leave, Norman and the rest are standing right there. Craven says Spider-Man sent us here and these boys are not who they are looking for. Norman tells Johnny Storm to bring Peter outside. No! Johnny says that he has a better idea. How about he just gets the hell out of here before he has to paint him a new set of eyebrows? As he flames up, he charges towards Norman and Norman responds by changing into the goblet. As the two clash, an explosion goes off and Norman screams out in pain. Sandman reaches out to Johnny and Johnny asks, what are you gonna do? Make my underpants itchy? The sand washes over Johnny, putting him out. And Bobby skates in, blasting a Sandman with his ice. Electro shoots the ice slide, knocking Bobby away and Johnny gets back up to rejoin the fight. But through Bobby's pillar of ice, Sandman crushes down on Johnny once more. Bobby rides back in, throwing ice shards and Electro tells him, really? Ice and water? Really? Electro electrifies the ice, causing it to explode, throwing Bobby into the nearby house. Electro then says that he should probably get a move on. Surely the neighbors have already called the cops. And Craven sniffs the air, telling them all to wait. Everyone looks down the road to see Peter standing in the street. Vulture pops his wings and he jets towards him. And he shouts, asking, you know what you did to my life? And Peter webs up his face, swinging him into a house. Still struggling through the pain of the bullet passing through him, he huffs, telling them, <laughs> Who's next? He looks around and he sees Norman, Johnny, and Bobby all knocked out. And he thinks that he just gotta stall them until the Ultimates can get here. He calls out to them telling him, here's what's gonna happen. And a second shield and some other superheroes are gonna show up. And I'm talking all of them. So if you surrender, I can. Craven says, it's a bluff. Look at the boy, he's a mess. And Sandman yells, he's right. Him, Electro, and Craven all charge forward. Peter kicks over a fire hydrant and he aims the water at the three of them. As the water goes towards Electro, he bursts into a mini explosion knocking him and the others to the ground. But before Electro can change back, Peter quickly webs him up and flings him over, punching him out. He then falls to his knees, stating, that's all I had left in me. And then he looks up, stating, ha. Ah. Hi. The neighbors gather around Spider-Man, some with their phones taking pictures. And Spider-Man asks if someone could, you know, call 911. I'm not doing so good here. His spider sense begins to go off and a boy from the crowd shouts, Behind you! Sandman pulls himself together and begins to crush down on Spider-Man, trapping him inside of the sand. As Sandman tries to hold on, a web shoots out and Spider-Man pulls himself out as his spider sense is going off again. He says that he already knows he's under attack and the vulture swoops in, knocking Spider-Man to the ground. He hits the ground, bouncing, and he starts to get back up when he sees the vulture throw down two grenades. He shouts for everyone to run, and he tries to whip up the grenades to contain the explosion. As the blast goes off, it throws him into a car, and he bounces 
Rinses off into the lawn. Over on the freeway, Aunt May gets a call from their neighbor, Doris, asking where is she. She tells her that she's out driving, and Doris tells her that she doesn't know how to say this, but she thinks that Peter is Spider-Man. Aunt May asks what's going on, and Doris says that these men are here, and she doesn't know how to say this, but it looks like they're killing him. Without a moment of hesitation, Aunt May slams on the brakes, and she spins the car around, heading back towards the house. Back in the house, the three villains continue to beat down on Peter Parker, now with the entire world aware that he is Spider-Man, until Sandman gets ready to kill him. But before he can, a bolt of electricity shoots through him, causing him to fall apart. Electro shouts that there's only so much crap that I can take from a 13-year-old kid. So this one I'm gonna finish. He begins to charge up when suddenly a gun is fired, and the gun continues to go off, shooting several more times into Electro's back until he finally explodes. Peter looks around asking what happened, and then he sees Aunt May holding a smoking gun. She starts to look around asking, what? What did I just do? And Peter takes the gun away, telling her it's okay. I got it now. He slowly begins to fall back to his knees and Aunt May screams for someone to call an ambulance! Gwen goes to check on Johnny and Bobby, stating that they are breathing, so she thinks that they're going to be okay. She thinks, and Peter begins to tell Aunt May that he's sorry. He knows this isn't the life that she wanted. She smiles, telling him that he's a crazy boy, and Peter smiles back, saying, yeah, at least I'm kinda cute. Then a shadow looms over them, and Norman lights up. Just as Norman slams his fist down, Peter grabs Aunt May and Gwen, telling them that you need to go right now. As they land, Peter grabs Gwen, telling her that he doesn't care how she does it. Just take Aunt May and get her out of here. Go as far as they can. Aunt May looks at her coat and she sees blood, and she tells Peter to wait. As Norman jumps over the house, as Peter pushes Gwen, asking, Didn't you hear what I just said? Get out of here! Before Norman can land, he jumps into the air, punching Norman back into the ground. He catches himself at a lamppost, standing, Ah! Can you just do me a favor now and stay right there? I'll be right back. He leaps away and Norman screams for him to come back. And Peter tells him, yeah, 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 hold that thought. He lands next to Johnny and he shakes him awake, telling him, I'm in a really bad situation and I can really use your help, man. Johnny pushes Peter out of the way, telling him, I got this. Flame on! He rockets back into the air, grabbing Norman and he shouts, come on, burn! And as Johnny begins to gather all of his strength, he creates an explosion into Norman. However, when everyone looks, they see Norman absorbing the blast, draining Johnny's fire. His body begins to bounce on the ground and he says, I'm sorry, I'm too, too. And Norman begins to float over Peter, turning white and purple from Johnny's heat. And he starts to throw down fireballs. The moment that Norman stops, Peter grabs a mailbox and he begins to beat Norman with it. He jumps onto Norman asking him, what's next? Are you gonna kill me? Then what? It won't bring back the son that you killed. Using what strength he has left, he lifts and throws Norman into a fire hydrant, extinguishing him. He then falls to his knees and when he looks back up, he sees Norman get back up and walk towards him. Norman tells him, no, it won't bring Harry back, but at least Spider-Man will be dead. Peter hangs his head telling him, well, there's that. Norman's eyes begin to glow and then a bright light begins to shine on them and a speeding truck races through. Peter sees the person behind the wheel as Mary Jane and she runs the truck straight into Norman, crashing it into him. Suddenly the windshield is punched out and before Mary Jane can panic, Peter jumps in, pulling her out of the mess. He shouts, that was insane. Was that truck stolen? And Mary Jane tells him, you're welcome for that. The two kiss and then Peter yells, now that that's over, get the hell out of here. And he throws her into the distance before landing though he webs up a net to catch her. And that's when Norman crawls out from underneath the truck stating that today is your day of rocketing. I'm delivering God's message, and God wants this to happen. Peter picks up the truck, and he slams it on Norman, screaming, SHUT UP! He tries to pick it back up again, and Norman tells him, I am going to destroy you and your family, just as you did mine. Peter brings the truck down again, crushing Norman! And he steps back and explodes in a fiery blast, throwing Peter to the ground. Johnny quickly runs over to Peter's body, and he looks back to see Norman's hand, his human hand, burning in the fire. Johnny says that it looks like he got him. Peter tells him, good, that's about all I had in me. Mary Jane runs over shouting that they need an ambulance, someone call 911! And Aunt May starts pushing through the crowd with Gwen stating that Peter told them not to be here! But as she gets through, she sees Peter laying lifelessly on the ground and Mary Jane screaming. Tears are falling from her eyes and Mary Jane says that he got really hurt. Aunt May runs over to Peter asking, what did you do? And he coughs and weakly says, it's okay, I did it. Aunt May shouts, telling him to hang on. The ambulance is, and he stops her, and he grabs her coat, asking, didn't you see? It's okay, I did it. He begins to cry, telling her that he couldn't save him. He couldn't save Uncle Ben, no matter what he did. But for her, he saved her. He did it, he saved her life. Before he could finish, his hand gives out, and he closes his eyes. 
Aunt May's eyes go wide, and Johnny leans down to hear his art. But before he comes back up, he doesn't say anything. Aunt May shouts, no, oh god no, not him too, please not him too! And Mary Jane picks up Peter's body crying. Gwen pulls Aunt May away as she screams for him to come back. And while everyone mourns the loss of their hero, Norman listens to everyone's cries, and he smiles. His evil, twisted smile, because he took Spider-Man's life. As Peter's vision fades, he begins to feel a warm light wash over him. He opens his eyes, and he sees himself walking with Uncle Ben. Uncle Ben pulls him close, telling him, You did good. You did real good. That is the conclusion to the Ultimate Spider-Man storyline. And where this goes next is the aftermath, the fallout of his death. Yes, eventually he was brought back through some weird means, but this was the end. They ended Peter Parker in the Ultimate Universe, and this is how Miles Morales was brought in, and he is the new Spider-Man after this. Maybe we'll come back to that storyline eventually. If you guys let us know in the comments down below, or you give this video a like, we'll pick up. The Miles Morales storyline isn't too long before he was merged into the main universe. But anyway, let me know what you thought of this ending. Because even if you didn't enjoy the Ultimate Universe, the Ultimate Spider-Man, this is one of the most epic endings for a hero. Because we took a hero. We took Spider-Man. We let him die. Finally doing what he failed to do, saving those that he loved. Don't forget to subscribe for more Spider-Man storylines, and I'll see you next time right here.